Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sophieast, the podcast where we take you through some of the major topics facing importers and manufacturers in China today. Hello, everyone, and welcome again for another episode of the China Manufacturing Decoded podcast. So I'm your host Bruno Anjouran, and here I'm joined again by Clive Greenwood. And in a previous episode, we went through, let's say, the the, the main challenges of product compliance.、Uh, why people,、uh, you know, why, why companies don't always do a very good job of ensuring compliance of their products.、Uh, why the manufacturer in a faraway country often doesn't feel very、uh, directly concerned.、Uh, why the You know the 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 certifying bodies and you know the law enforcement agencies, the market surveillance authorities, and so on, are not doing everything that they could, basically to、uh, to catch the unsafe products. Let's say this way, okay.、Uh, and in this episode, we are looking at what we believe is showing us the future of CE.、Um, let's say, yeah, CE directives and and、uh, you know. Uh, through the new、uh, medical device regulation, which is replacing the old medical device directives,、uh, and we believe we've been、uh, talking about this with with Clive before.、Uh, we believe this is really showing us the future of where the the the, the other directives are going to go. Maybe also d- replaced directly by a regulation. But anyway, that's the future of where it's going to go for、uh, low voltage machinery and so on. Again,、uh, nice to、uh, see you here, Clive.、Uh, maybe you can give us a short intro about yourself again, so for for people who haven't heard the the, the previous episode. Okay. Yeah. Well,、uh, hello, everybody.、Uh, thank you for inviting me back,、uh, Rayo. Much appreciate it, and giving the chance to talk to you.、Uh, my name is Clive Greenwood. I'm the compliance officer for a company called WWMG Associates.、Um, we specialize in Uh, standards and compliance and quality control and quality assurance and that type of thing.、Um, I work、um, quite heavily in the medical device manufacturing sectors of compliance.、Um, and as uh, as uh, Reynold just said, there there are changes and these changes are huge. There is a massive swing.、Um, we said before in the, in the in the previous episode that. It, this was all around how to tighten up、um, devices which were going into the into the European single market, and ensure that the product met the design and accredited standards. And this is the what we're going to talk about, which is the medical device directive, and that is. A, a huge difference. Yeah. So let's let's look at actually what changed from the what is it active implant medical device directive and the more general medical device directives、uh, from from the nineties、uh, that have been the basis for all the CE certificates on yeah a lot of medical devices right o- over the years. Now this is changing. The EU came up with a new regulation. So this time it's not a directive; it's already it's a regulation. So it's already passed as a as a law in all of the member countries, right?、Uh, and through okay, let's call it the MDR, Medical Device Regulation.、Um, it, it's it's a, quite an interesting development because it actually aims very clearly at closing the loopholes that we mentioned. In the previous episode, so let's、um, let, let, let's go through it. So th- the first thing is when when did it actually come into effect?、Uh, it was published in 2017, but it just came into effect. Actually, is that correct? Well, it was、uh, first of all、um, the the two standards that we're talking about is the.、Um, Medical Device Directive 93 Stroke 43 EEC, and the new one, which is MDR 201745. Yeah,、um, 
it came, it was, it was first proclamated in May of 2017 to come into effect on the 27th of May 2020. That was delayed for one year because the, the authorities were concerned that if they brought the standard into play then, there would be a lack of PPE because the, the manufacturers would not be able to comply with this standard. So it was delayed for a year and came into effect on the 27th of May this year, 20, 2021. Right. So if, let's say I'm a, I'm a business importing medical devices in the EU and then one of my medical devices has a C certificate that was issued under the MDD, let's say in 2018, when do I have to switch to the MDR? You have four years from the date of issue. Right, so next year. So, so next, next year, year I need to be, okay. And is this going to be an easy transition or not? No, it isn't. <laughs> I, I, I work in compliance and standards and I, I just love this standard. It is probably one of the best ones I've ever I, I actually studied. It, it just closes and makes absolutely clear. It, it makes it crystal clear as to the requirements that you have to comply to the CE standard right. and the right. use so, of that standard. Yeah, so let's go point by point so people really understand. So the scope is a little bit wider, right? So it's everything that can be used in a medical setting. Is that, is that correct? It is anything which requires the certification to CE Medical. If I'll give you some example. Mm -hmm. A dust mask, if it says dust mask on it, mm -hmm. does not, is not covered with this standard. Mm -hmm. If it's a, for example, a IIR surgical mask, then it does. Mm -hmm. It is covered by this standard. So it's a device which can be used for the treatment, monitoring, diagnostics of a patient or used in a setting of care. A setting of care, yes. So that's rather wide. Okay. Rather wide, yeah. So settings of care, for example, if it was, for, for example, a nursing home, yes, it, com it must comply with this now. Okay. All right. Whereas so, MDD was yeah. rather loose on that. Right. So let's let's come down through the, the, the various loopholes that we discussed last time. Uh, the first one is for, let's say, um, for the customs uh, officers that see, oh, this is a certain kind of beep, you know, whatever, medical device. How easy is it going to be for them to check if that medical device is actually, you know, certified to the MDR? Right. Okay. Well, first, first and foremost, the MDR is a register. Okay. And the product and the supplier and the importer and the agent and the person who makes it available to the market is recorded on a European wide national database. Mm -hmm. The customs officer will very simply type in the number and it will come and tell him exactly. There is no hiding from this. Uh, you were saying uh, it all goes into the initial database and then... Yeah, there's as, as two, two sections to the database. Um, it's uh, called EMOND. It has a, a state database and then it has a statewide database. So that's, we're talking about member states. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the, 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 this thing arrives at a dock in France, then the guy... The customs or border control can actually type in on his paperwork, and there it is. It's checked. Yeah. Okay. So much easier for them to see. Oh, this one is suspicious. Let's put it aside. Much easier. I, I, incredibly easier. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, it, uh, it, it, it 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 is probably going to be a a normal standard operating procedure. Yes. Yeah. This is why, as I said at the, the beginning of the, the episode, 
what we're looking at here, what they put in place for medical devices is going to be like a, a framework or a template that's going to, to be, um, you know, in part copied and pasted to, you know, to replace the current, uh, the, the other C directives, I think. And probably as we discussed, some other countries, some other areas will also look at that and say, hmm, there's some interesting things here. Let's learn from that. Right. I think it's absolutely likely that yes. um, the, the North American market will follow suit. I know that the Canadian market is following suit. You are probably looking at, at a system which will become worldwide and not right. just in medical yes. devices. I believe that exactly. they will take, take this and say, well, OK, well, we've had a pro we've had a problem here. We'll cover it with that. Because yeah. The, yeah. the requirements of, of, of MDR 2017-745 uh, is so vast, mm. it is so intrusive that it just lends itself to tightening up everything. I mean, if you can, re you probably don't remember, I'm slightly older than you, when people started first looking at something which was called uh, British Standard 5750, 5750. Part one and part two. Part one was for design, part, part two was for manufacturing. First of all, you got you got the naysayers, it will never happen. And then you got the people, well, I mean, I was sort of like involved with it as well, so, as was my father, by the way, who actually wrote a great deal of this wow. standard. Wow. It will happen. We believed it would happen because we believed that it improved. The this was a long time before Toyota decided it wanted to go to continuous improvement and start using Japanese terms like Kaizen and things like this. This was a long time before this. This was first done for British nuclear fuels and for BP mm. in the oil exploration in the North Sea. Mm. Okay, then it became an ISO standard, so it became not a British standard but an international standard. So there is a history of how these things migrate. Yeah, it became ISO 9001, right? Which then became, became uh, again, 2000, 2008, 2015 is what we're on now. Right. But there which, is, yeah, yeah. There is like a, a framework. Yeah. Yeah. The, the big difference, and the difference when we look at the, the medical device standards now, which ties in with what we're saying here of 13, um, 485, 2016, mm. is that this new requirement MDR 2017 ties together the aspects of these two quality assurance standards which are now what we call risk-based or risk-based mm -hmm. thinking in the case of the ISO uh, 9001 2015 it brings all of that together and part of your use of that certificate is that the, your QMS your quality management systems meet these standards so yes. to be clear so this, yeah extra requirements yes so it's uh, not it's not it, just it, about it, oh i get a few samples and the mdd before had some of that but here it's they're going as you say more intrusive they're going yes. more in depth it's not just about getting yeah. a few samples and saying okay this product is certified uh, no. this is also about looking at quality management system behind it and the manufacturing the, yes, you, you have terms for manufacturing the product, as they say, right? To be accredited to, uh, to to have the CE mark for medical devices, class one, two, and three, which require the the um, the uh, compliance to MDD, uh, sorry, to the old MDD standard, the new uh, MDR standard, you have to supply not only your test data, your research data your risk analysis, your effectiveness uh, analysis, your manufacturing analysis, your manufacturing quality control plan, and your manufacturing quality control plan checklist. All have to be, this is what we now call the technical documents, the technical documents that need to be submitted to the accreditation companies. Right. And you do because, not, get, you do not yeah. get the standard unless you have done this. Right, because as you mentioned before, uh, you you send twenty four samples to a lab. They certify that this product is 
is compliant to the, to, to, to the standard and then you make 24 million of these and who has any idea how compliant they are now yeah that's, that's gone they are actually addressing that yes they want to make yeah, sure that, 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 that yeah that's gone system. from now right that, that that's gone okay yes. when 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 this standard came into fact of, of, in may of this year all of that finished yeah and to add to that another way that they address this is they actually said the notified bodies are responsible for doing certain things so the notified yes. bodies now have to do more right uh, the notified bodies are liable. Yeah, that's another topic. I want to. I'm going to come to that right <laughs> after. Yeah. But notified bodies also have to keep monitoring. Yes. What uh, happens yes. in production, right? Yes. And you have to supply to the notified body as part of their normal audits your historical manufacturing data. Right. And yes. your market yes. surveillance data as well. By the way. Hmm. Right. Uh, okay. So that yeah, much more um, intrusive as you said before. Yes. Now let's let's get to liability because that's a really big one, right? So in the traditional uh, setting where you, you you purchase some products, you're the importer, you put the, the products on the market, something goes wrong, you're the one in trouble, right? Uh, if there is a representative, a EU representative, uh, they might also get in trouble. Now here. Uh, they really take the whole supply chain, right? What they call yeah. the economic operators. So there's the yes. manufacturer. If the manufacturer is outside of the EU, they have to have a EU representative. And obviously yeah. there's an importer. Yeah. And then there's a distributor, right? Yeah. And I don't know if I forget somebody here, but, and, and there's a notified body somewhere here that ends out the certification. You know, there's a lot, there's the, the evaluation, da, 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 and then the monitoring over time and so on. So the, the notified body is only a few big, uh, yeah, a few big labs, let's say based in Europe that are on the list that are authorized to uh, to provide the, the CE certificates, right? Yes, this and, is this is again a shakeup which has happened. Um, uh, in, 20, in, 20, in 2020, okay, people, and we won't name names, but there was some, accreditation bodies which were handed out CE certificates like they were chocolates. Those are not on the list. Okay. In looking at the, the liability things of, as, as how things are going. Okay. We, when we talk about everybody in the supply chain, I mean, I want to make sure everybody understands this. Everybody in that supply chain should be accredited to manufacturing medical sales. They should be accredited to 13 485. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Either... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's if you're a broker, then you're selling PPE now. I would suggest you find another job. Right, right. Because you're right. not going to get that certification. Uh, you're easily. not going to get the certification. And you have to provide financial information. Or in other words, you have to show in your bank that you have got the financial ability to cover the liability which you're taking. Yeah. Right. So it's so not clear just about this. you're liable. Yeah. It's just to make sure the product is certified. These different economic operators, they are very clearly identified, right? I mean, the importers- yes, so they have, have to be identified on the labeling. packaging as well. Yes, right. Okay. Uh, the, the EU rep also has to be on the labeling of, of the product, I think, yeah. So if something goes wrong, the, you know who EU you- The EU rep, no, everybody has to be on the labeling. Everybody that's involved in bringing that product to the market has to be on the labeling right yeah. so if you are so, the importer of record then you have to be on that labeling right the government and obviously, must be able to find you yeah and in the database that you mentioned before right yeah uh, you're addressing so, the database everything there's no way you can hide no. you're definitely liable it's very clear and there's yeah. no there's no cap there's no maximum uh so if you your product causes a lot of issues then uh, you, you're in a, a whole lot of trouble. Plus, um, you know, you have to show that you have the financial ability to, to take some liability. So it's not just like no, you have an to empty... take the liability of the product value. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, don't just have a, like an empty shell, a new company, 
uh, rents a little office, that's actually not going to be sufficient. That is not going to be good enough. So, okay, so liability, they really did pretty much everything they could to, uh, to, to, to close that loophole. I think it's, it's pretty clear. As we mentioned, uh, yeah, the customs, it's much easier for them to, to catch the issues with that, that database. The notified body has to be much more involved. Notified body is also liable. Notified body is also liable. And they're also liable as well if they provide any fake documents or false documents. Right. So that's a very interesting one. Because for people like us, spend a lot of time in a certain country, you know, fake certificates, uh, either from another product or, you know, with a little bit of Photoshop or whatever, that mm -hmm. is just extremely, extremely common, right? So what happens if the, you know, a market service authority or the EU rep or the notified body find that one of the documents that was submitted, for example, just a, like an inspection report. report with some data. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a test report, right? Some of the data are fake. What is the consequence? Well, the, 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 the root of what happens is as soon as you find out about that, you have to notify the notification body instantly, mm -hmm. who will then remove the product from the market until that documentation is corrected. So the notified body and the relevant authorities, right? From what that's I read. Right. Yeah, that's and right. And then you, you have to remove it from the market. You have so to remove the product from the market. If you have it in stock, not, not, not sell. If it's in stock, it's off the shelves. Right, if it's in stores, Put it out the it's, shelves. It's, it basically, remember when, when we were talking about inequality assurance, it goes into a quarantine area. Yes. yes. That's what and, happens. And that's what must happen. Yeah. And if, if, if you've sold 10,000 units to various hospitals. It's a great product recall. It's product recall. And that's yeah. very expensive. Yes. And your customer is going to hate you. You're not going well, to be very problems. pleased with you. Um, Right. Or the recall, what may happen, it, it, it really will decide or be decided by the severity of the fraudulent activity. Mm. If, for example, it's a, a clinical test report, it's off the shelves, bang, and it's recalled, and that's the end of the matter. Mm. All right. If it's a test report which has got a few data points wrong, well, it's off the shelves, we might not get a recall. So that would be the recall would be looked at on as a case by case basis, but for sure, the product is off the shelf. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Okay, until the point where that documentation is corrected. Right, right, and it's not just no. fake documents. It's no, it's, no, 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 no. It's if, anything. If you get a, if you do a test and you find something, you know, uh, that is going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's written. You have to notify immediately. To, you immediately. have to tell the authorities and the yes. various parties. Uh, yes. <laughs> and yeah, I guess if you don't give them a pretty clear corrective action plan and 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 show containment of this this bad batch and all these kind of things, uh, they, they they're going to to come down on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you will lose a certificate, and you will probably lose your your QMS, and you'll probably lose. Uh, all your compliances and you would have to redo them again. Right. Okay. Now, I think we, yeah, I think we, we, we covered like the, the main loopholes that we mentioned last time. So something that is really, really frightening. Uh, and we spoke to some of these people, right. Who've been selling some medical devices that they, they were buying in, in some Asian countries and mm -hmm. they got it certified to the MDD to the, you know, the, the old standard, it was not that hard. And eh, maybe some of the documents provided by the manufacturer were not you know, exactly uh, real, but it went okay. And now they see the MDR coming up and they have to show, you know, where's your data by your clinical trial? Where's all of this, you know, oh, are you, do you have a yeah. quality measure system that is compliant with all of that? We're going to audit it and we're going to keep monitoring it and everything. And these people, how, how can they actually 
you know, transition, it's, it's, it's going to be very hard, right? In many cases. It's going to be, in many cases, it's going to be impossible um, because they just, you know, first and foremost, the requirements of the standard means that they must have on staff a compliance officer yeah. with at least four years experience, at least four years experience in compliance or in quality assurance mm. on staff are available to them. And the word in here is constantly, which means 24 hours a day. <laughs> okay. Simply to write the, I mean, I don't know whether you can see it here, but here in fact is the standard. 174 pages. Now, I'm used to reading standards. As I said, I do that as a hobby. And it is a very difficult document to read, but it is an incredibly clear document. There is no ambiguity whatsoever with this. Mm. How do you get compliant? Well, the first thing is that you need to have a compliance officer. Mm -hmm. That means your compliance officer has got to have experience in law. Okay. You must have an experience in manufacturing. You must have experience in quality assurance. That's the difficulty. Yes. Yes. Now, are you asking me if there's a way around that? The answer is no. Yeah, because we, we all know... Um, a lot of people who, who, who sell these products and other people who manufacture these products are going to be thinking, okay, how do I get, you know, all the paperwork in order to give it to them? Um, if the manufacturer is not sure, we need to find some kind of consultant, um, you know, and yeah, if they need to have some names, we find some people with the right CV and would kind of half make it up, uh, you know, we, we, we've seen that a lot, right? And in many cases, this sort of approach has, has worked. I mean, people, you know, with, with certain registers at all, uh, at least, you know, you, you can get a number of ISO certifications, you know, with that, with that approach. And there was probably some of that also with the MDD certification to, to get the CE cert. So- There was a lot now, of that with MDD. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, and with PP, yes. Uh, yeah. So, and basically, and I, I, I did have a look at the standard, and I, I, I would agree with you. It's this is going to be much, much harder, right? How, how are these people going to do? Well, I suppose what we're talking about here is that the game's up, isn't it? Yeah. You either comply or you get out of the market. Yeah. So. Okay. You know, it's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. Right. And this is why, and this is why I think that the same approach is going to be taken in a vast, uh, in, in a wider area, uh, and in different industries mm. as well, because it is so so good. Um, I, I, you know, I, I I don't mind saying it is one of the best standards I've read. Mm. Right. Okay. It it is it, it when when like yourself. Uh, well, when, when I started um, WWMG, we did it for that reason. We did it for the reason that we were appalled at the amount of rubbish, mm. which was manufactured and given so-called stickers. And I call the CE at that point a sticker. Okay. That's all it was. Nothing more. Right. Yeah. Okay. I am a Six Sigma black belt, which means that I work on zero defects. It means that it's either black or it's white. Yeah, it's pass or fail. There is no gray in the middle. Mm. Okay, this is exactly like that. Yeah. There is no gray. And that's what's been needed. And that's what's been needed for a very long time. It's clear, it's concise, it's relatively easy to understand if you if you read standards. If you don't read standards or you've not got experience with this, then it's going to be a problem. I agree. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. you're going to get lost to the the chapters yeah. and the annexes and what exactly is this and 
How do yeah. I do that? I have no clue. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. I think it's 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 it, it, it's too late for many companies. Okay. Um, if, for example, to be clear, if you are bringing a product to market right now, you're in the development stage, mm -hmm. and it is falls under this classification, then you need to be doing this now. Oh yeah. Oh, you need to prepare. Yeah. Collect the Preparing documents, now. do the risk analysis, do the benefit yeah. analysis, all these kind of things. You need to do them right yeah. now, yes. I mean, the, the risk analysis alone, and, and here where, is where I like what, how they brought in parts of the um, section 4.2 of ISO 9001 2015 on the risk analysis. This has mm -hmm. come straight into here. You need a complete, uh, um, you know, context of total operation register. That has to be put in there, and that has to go with the product, and that ha product has to go there, and you have to prove that you are doing this. Wow. That's, okay. There's, there's, there's the difference. You have to physically prove by documented format that you are doing everything as laid down in the requirements to sell the product to this market. And you're going to need to get one of the few notified bodies that's on the list. Um, yeah, you have to get that. Now, I was talking to some people the other day, and they were telling me that they are backed up until 2023. Wow. Now. Yes. Because there's, first, there's not that many notified bodies there. Second, yeah. it's a lot of work. Uh, third, there's not that many train good auditors in these notified bodies there are some of course but yeah, so a, yeah, so some, yeah. that's going to be a huge surge first you need to transition every time you transition you get more work but here is not just transition it's i mean i can it's a whole new ball enough. game it's, a, it's a literally a whole new ball game and how many mondays is this going to be especially for a relatively sensitive product these notified bodies will 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 charge you know and will will spend a lot of a lot of days actually going through everything and saying this 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 you oh, still yeah, have uh, NCs sorry you still don't have it come back to us when you have it and everything yeah so know, I'm looking uh, as you know I'm doing one at the moment okay for a company I'm looking at a minimum of six months minimum just to get them. Compliance, just, to, just ready to get them to, compliant. To yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, so the effect is going to be, if I may say that, a cleanup of a lot of the products, a lot of medical devices on the market, and probably, yeah, the authorities are not going to back down. Again, this is already a regulation, so it's not just it's not like the countries have the choice of delaying things, mm, no, you know, putting no. them in putting it in, into their own uh, uh, corpus of, of laws. No, it's already a regulation. It's already applicable for all 25 members. Uh, yeah. So it, it, a lot of devices are going to be blocked, basically cut, removed from the market over time. People would understand. Uh, some people will do the work. Some other people will not do the work. Okay. And then and we discussed it before, what we think, and this is really why it's so important for, for the listeners, again, is that there's other directives that lead to C marks for other product categories. And if this works well for medical devices, they would do it, they would take the same approach, maybe not that hard on some of the aspects, but uh, they would take this basically some of the same approach for some other product categories. And then the, the US and Canada, they're gonna look at this and they're gonna say, well, maybe the FDA needs to, you know, go a little bit deeper on this point, this point, this point, because it's really working well for, for the EU, right? That, that, that's what we're yeah, thinking. Basically. They can do this because as far as FDA goes, to, they don't need to do anything because it is, because remember, it's an ISO, it's an international standards. They can yeah, just lift but, that yeah. standard up and put it there. But Boom. The quality management system, yes, sure. Yes. Yeah, but but MDR MDR 2017 is not about product. It's all about the management of that product. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So think of the, the normal medical standard, okay? The normal ISO standard, ISO uh, 13485. That now has just been given teeth. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. You could say that. Teeth. You could say that. Yeah. And big teeth. Real, yeah. A yeah. real way, you know, to have notified bodies be very, very careful when they certify a company. To, yeah, because uh, they can be liable. In the, yeah. Remember. They can be liable. They can right. be liable. Yes. So if they, it, you know, all of this, I think it's a fantastic thing because it, it just cleans up the whole mess. Yeah. And I don't think that anybody listening to this or, or reading this or anything would say it wasn't about time. Oh, well, especially again after the PPE yeah. disaster of uh, 2020, uh, I think everybody sort of became aware of um, People yes, become the aware need for yeah. real enforcement of standards. Yeah. yeah, but this, so that people don't understand, this was not a knee-jerk reaction to medical problems, medical standards. No, it was, it was in, the, in the worst way was, before. Two years before, years before. It yeah. just yeah. meant that it's going to be enforced. Yeah. Okay. okay. If anybody thought or thinks that, oh, it'll just go along the same as what it goes on before. It doesn't matter. We'll find a way around it. I can guarantee you, you are not going to do that. They will find you and they will prosecute you. There is absolutely no doubt. No doubt in my mind, people will end up in court and people will end right. up in prison. Hmm. Wow. Well, on this positive note. <laughs> ah, they always like to end on a positive note. <laughs> yes, that's a very yeah. positive note from Clive. Uh, yes. Okay, well. I'm in compliance. Um, I like to send people to jail. <laughs> Bad people on me, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, at least our listeners have been warned. Yes, that's an important point, not just for medical devices again, but for the, the, the future okay. of a lot of different product categories. Uh, thanks a yeah, lot, Clive. Ready for it. Yes. Thanks a lot. That that was, um, yeah, yeah I, I hope that opened the eyes of many people. Good. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Renault, and we will talk soon, no doubt. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, Clive. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to like and share, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other places that you get your podcasts from. See you next time.